Welcome back. In this lecture, we will address another social aspect of electric vehicles. And we'll take the perspective of data exchange that comes with the adoption of electric vehicles. While vehicles in general are becoming more connected for navigational and driving safety purposes, for example, we will focus on the connection with the electricity grid. Let us explore what this means for the privacy of the consumer and how the integrity and security of the data is arranged. The data exchange that comes with electric vehicle charging invades the user's privacy and is therefore subject to legal obligations of personal data protection. The intensity of data exchange and therewith the risk of potential privacy breaches increases if the charging process is subject to demand response schemes that provide flexibility to the electric power system. In order to benefit from low electricity tariffs during off-peak times and avoid high tariffs during times of peak demand, the electric vehicle user has to indicate personal preferences for when his vehicle must be ready for use. As car use times are a strong indicator for personal routines, the user must be able to trust the flexibility provider, an aggregator or any other intermediate between himself and the power system, to secure his privacy. Given the digital communications between the electric vehicle, the electricity distribution network operator, the energy service provider or other providers of charging services, the data exchange and communication scheme is vulnerable for any kind of cyber attack, hacks and data manipulation. That is obviously also the case for the electric vehicle as such, which is often described as a computer on wheels, and the risks will only be aggravated for autonomous, the self-driving vehicles. It is evident that cybersecurity breaches in electric vehicles can have far more dramatic consequences than only privacy breaches. Already, many of the parties in the field are working on safe and secure communication protocols. Establishing such protocols is not easy, however, as the interconnected e-mobility and energy system involves many different actors. Minimum requirements are therefore set, which must which must be adhered to by all parties, uh, such as for the authentication process of each charging session through a cryptographic key. Meanwhile, it is important that the protocols used remain open and relatively easy for new players to implement, so that a trade-off must be made here. Interoperability between countries is also important as electricity networks at markets are connected across national borders, especially in the European context. The European network for cybersecurity has therefore taken a front-runner role in setting minimum requirements for smart charging transactions. Implementation might be taking some time, unfortunately, since not all European countries use the same set of protocols for operating charging stations, at least not yet. The privacy and cybersecurity risks that come with the use of electric vehicles will be balanced by the user with the private benefits to be gained. And these private benefits may be immaterial, such as a cleaner conscience for not polluting the air while driving, or material, in terms of cost savings by participating in demand response schemes, which allow the electric vehicle user to reap part of the value of flexibility service provided to the grid. Each user will ultimately weigh the different costs and benefits for himself in deciding whether or not to buy an electric vehicle and how to use it. Unfortunately, it, it is the case as shown by many apps and other internet-based services, that most citizens are hardly aware of the privacy they give up or the risk of privacy breaches they expose themselves to. Especially if they are rewarded with free services or substantial discounts, many consumers seem to be all too willing to provide personal details trusting the other party that the data will be handled in a secure manner. 
And as a policymaker, it is not easy to intervene in the exchange of data between an individual consumer and a company. Limiting these exchanges, in the case of car charging for electric cars, could bring a penalty in limiting the flexibility volume that electric vehicles, vehicles could provide to support the operation of the electricity grid. Government could consider, however, to impose certain boundaries on the exchange of personal data and at least define requirements for how, where and how long the data is stored. Furthermore, government can, government can also stage campaigns to raise awareness with consumers of the data they provide and the risks involved, for instance with respect to the data that electric vehicle owners provide to the aggregator. As a default, aggregators should not be allowed to share personal data with other parties, unless the client has given explicit consent. In view of the cybersecurity risks and vulnerabilities involved in coupling electric vehicles as flexibility providers with the electricity grid, aggregators should at least be transparent about where, for how long and how securely they store our data. They should be transparent about the possible threats and explicitly and immediately report cybersecurity breaches and, if they happened, data leaks. Consumers are thus in a better position to weigh the pros and cons of participating in smart charging schemes and to include cybersecurity performance in the choice for one aggregator or another. Thank you again for watching and please do not hesitate to provide us with your feedback.